Hello, hi everyone. How's everyone doing? I hope great. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to everyone. And I can see most of us have joined from from uh, US and Canada. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a decent time to join. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, thank you, thanks a lot for your for your presence here. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, I am part of the Invenio's media and entertainment business. Uh, work closely with SAP and with Kerar here, uh, who are going to be part of the speaker panel. Uh, and uh, we're just now going to be up with the screen. Uh, also, to give you some bit of a background, why did we choose this as a topic? Uh, we had done a webinar uh, uh, close to a month back, which was basically on production finance uh, lifecycle. Again, an SAP solution that we have developed for the media and entertainment industry. Uh, at the end of uh, the webinar, we did a small survey and we came to know that uh, this is something uh, that the customers would want to hear as the next topic. So that was uh, the reason for us to choose uh, revenue recognition on SAP as one of our topics today. Uh, we have all those who had requested for it. We have uh, a lot of audience. Thanks a lot for your time again. Uh, so do we have the screens uh, up here? Sylvia? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. So uh, are you on, on the slide first? Yes. Okay. Yeah, are, are you able to watch the screen as well? Uh, yeah, we can see the screen, Vishal. So maybe okay. you just need to maximize your go to meeting. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm on the before we begin slide. I just want to set the, the, the ground rules. So, uh, you know, we'll be sending you the recording and uh, post the webinar. Uh, feel free to ask any questions at any point of time. We have a small chat box uh, which says questions on your right in the control panel so once you pose the questions there uh, myself and the other panelists will get to see that and we will answer that at the end of the webinar where we have a time reserved for it and uh, yeah i mean this is basically an interactive session so feel free to post your views and anything that you would want to hear very specifically on this topic and i will get that to the panelists uh, as we move forward and uh, going ahead, meeting up the team, we have uh, our speakers here and also a guest speaker from uh, from UK, uh, from our customers, the BBC Studios. Uh, I would want you know yourself to give uh, a short intro about you so we can start from uh, Kedar. Kedar, you want to start? Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are. Uh, so my name is Kedar. I head up the media and entertainment vertical within Invenio Business Solutions. Uh, we are a long-term SAP partner, uh, work very closely with Richard and his team uh, all across the world. Uh, and today I'll speak a little bit about RAR and its uh, or revenue recognition, its relevance in media industry and uh, uh, segue off the right sales part into BBC, BBC Studios, uh, which, uh, which Helene will take us through. Excellent. Richard, you want to go next? Yeah, can you hear me okay? So Richard Whittington, I run the global media industry for SAP. Um, you know, a large part of our strategy is actually partnering. So Invinio have been a great partner uh, in the past and continue to be, both investing in systems and solutions, but also delivering on their promise and with great domain knowledge. So I'm happy to be here today. Um, even better is uh, when customers talk about their story to other customers. So with that, Helene, I'll, I'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. Hi, so I'm Elaine Klosha. I'm the uh, global process owner for the order to cash stream for BBC Studios based in London. And we've just been through the uh, SAP implementation of Svoana and um, <clears throat> RAR, sorry. Excellent, excellent. Kida, do you want to take over and run with it? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Man. Uh, so first of all, um, who are we as in Venio? Uh, some of you might have heard of us. Uh, some of you might be attending uh, any webinar from Invenio for the first time. So let me give a very quick introduction about us. Uh, we are uh, we were established in 2006. So we are a 14 year uh, old company or young company uh, headquartered in Reading in the United Kingdom. 
but we have offices all around the world. We have uh, two offices in the US on, on the East Coast and the West Coast, plus one in Canada. We have uh, operations in, uh, in India, in Middle East, uh, and several other places. Uh, media entertainment it has been one of our focus right from the start and uh, right from our first customer which was the media and entertainment industry customer we have been working in the industry and we have been blessed to be working with some big names across the world uh, and we have had the uh, experience of working with customers around the world uh, from uh, five out of uh, four out of five co continents so far uh, which gives us a, a unique perspective to what's uh, how industry is changing and how customers in different parts of the world are doing and how we can bring all of that solution together in our innovation process. Uh, so we have some of the best SAP media skills uh, uh, when it comes to the industry uh, knowledge and knowledge of the SAP solutions, how do they fit for the media industry. And using that, we have also developed some IP solutions. Uh, so Richard talked about the uh, partner-driven focus uh, from uh, SAP, uh, especially in the media world. And we have received a great support from SAP in developing some of our IP solutions, uh, and we are continuing to do we are continuing to do that. So that's that's uh, something that that we take uh, a pride in. Uh, another thing that is very important that is uh, that we feel very proud about is all our customers are referenceable customers, and that's one record that we do not want to break. And talking about the customers, uh, here is a, a list of some of our customers uh, that we work with. So I'll not talk about all of them individually, but obviously. You can see BBC Studios where we did some work on revenue accounting and recognition, which is what we are going to talk about later in the day. Uh, but uh, as you can see from the list, um, for uh, for a company of our size, we have been lucky to be working with some of the biggest names in the industry, the biggest music company in the world, one of the largest book publishing company in the world, some of the largest broadcast and uh, newsprint companies also in the world. So that's that gives a, a good flavor for us in uh, in terms of the knowledge of the industry and the trends um, how the industry is changing so coming to the topic uh, we are going to talk about today uh, and that's uh, primarily around revenue recognition process so this is something that probably many of you might have seen the new five-step process or model that has been introduced for revenue recognition uh, which which originally started with ifrs 15 being introduced um, uh, as, as a gap or US GAAP equivalent of AC606. So this was basically coming together of uh, FASB and ISB all coming together and trying to form one standard so that all the companies can be evaluated on similar patterns or similar methodology for revenue recognition. So if you look at the slide, it looks simple. You know, uh, It's a five-step process. You start with uh, identifying the contract with the customer. Uh, then you identify separate performance obligations within that contract, determine the price for that transaction, uh, and whatever the transaction price is, you allocate that over different performance obligations. And finally, recognize the revenue. Uh, simple enough. But when you try to implement it in practice, it's not at all uh, easy. It's very, very complicated for any industry for that matter, but media in particular. And when it comes to right sales and contracts, where we have new challenges in today's world, it becomes even more complicated. So that's what we are going to focus on today. But before you go, we go into that, we wanted to give you a flavor of what this RAR is all about. Uh, how it is relevant for media industry, what all scenarios come across that we come across in the media industry, uh, where it is relevant, and uh, uh, how it fits into the right sales uh, scenario as well. So here is a small sample of how industries are affected by these changes uh, in IFRS 15 and AC 606. So uh, the, the lighter the color, the uh, more the density of the change. So media, as you can see, uh, is actually uh, slightly on the outward, but moving quite rapidly towards the inside. So it's getting darker and darker. So the impact is quite considerable. There are there are in industries on the fringes like retail, for example, uh, where is where it's a point of sale transaction at one point of time, and the impact is not much. Uh, and on the other end of the spectrum are uh, telco companies or professional services, uh, which have uh, an immediate impact, a significant immediate impact. Uh, for example, in telcos where you have the typical contract with uh, a handheld device uh, or mobile phone along with um, uh, your um, package for uh, calls and uh, data. Uh, so the, uh, the kind of impact that it has on the revenue recognition for those kind of companies is significant. Uh, media is unique because media with the changing business model is becoming more and more complex. And very soon it will probably be as complex or even more complex than telco. Um, so let me talk about some examples why this media industry is becoming more complex from revenue recognition point of view. 
So <clears throat> here are some examples of uh, revenue recognition use cases in media. Um, and I'm not restricting myself to write sales ads yet. We'll go to that as the next step. Uh, but even without that, if you look at uh, various other revenue uh, sources for media companies, so for example, channel distribution, you know, uh, and this is a scenario that even BBC Studio has. Uh, so as a broadcast conglomerate or a broadcast company, you could be selling your channel or uh, a package of channels to uh, a cable service provider or a direct to home service provider. And you could be charging those fees on various formats. It could be as a fixed fee per month or it could be based on the actual number of subscribers that you receive. And the revenue recognition for that is dependent on what kind of contract or what type of fees uh, you are charging. So it could be a straight line if it is a fixed fee, simple, it's a straight line over the uh, life of the deal. But if it is subscription based, then it's a bit more complicated because then you have to estimate the initial, uh, or, uh, you have to estimate what the uh, actual subscriber base would be for a month. The actual data comes, a little, comes in a little later, uh, typically a month uh, or six weeks later. And then you have to do the actual subscription fees adjustment and then um, uh, do your revenue recognition based on that. Another area which is impacted by revenue recognition uh, norms in revenue recognition changes is ad sales. So for example, you can, you can have the ad sales um, contract which is spread over a certain pe period or duration. So you have a 12 month uh, uh, ad sales agreement that you have reached with your, um, uh, with your customer and that could be across multiple platforms and the fees for that could be recognized over a period of time as the consumption happens on various platforms it this gets even more complex when you consider that you uh, revenue could be actually uh, recognized or can be considered only based on number of clicks or the number of uh, people registering through uh, and so on and so forth so this also is another complex process which can be uh, which can have a major impact on revenue recognition production process. So if you're a production studio, then uh, you can have your revenue recognition either based on production completion or percentage of work completed, or there can be various other methods. It can be on the number of episodes, so on, so on and so forth. So the revenue recognition becomes you know, complicated even in that case, if you are a production house. So these are just some example cases. The other one, uh, uh, which, which are also uh, quite relevant today are around subscriptions. So for example, if you have the subscription revenue, uh, based on delivery. Uh, so the typical traditional model of newspaper delivery or even now we have a lot of magazine delivery happening, educational, educational journals going out. Um, so the subscription fees are th then actually uh, recognized based on the event uh, which is actually triggered by the delivery of the issue. So this revenue recognition also has uh, uh, complications which you need to cons uh, take into account. Uh, online subscription, uh, a big, big uh, growth driver today for all of your, all of the media companies. So OTT, uh, the typical online uh, video platforms and also paywall subscriptions for the newspaper companies, for uh, magazines. So you can have the periodic subscription fees which can be spread over the entire subscription period. And the complication here is sometimes when you have to adjust it for the promotional month. So for example, a typical case is uh, if you refer somebody else uh, for a subscription uh, on an OTT platform, you get one month free. So simple enough scheme from marketing people's point of view, but for finance people, then that means you have to spread that re revenue, which would have been a 12 month revenue over 13 months. And you need to make adjustments in your revenue recognition. How do you do that? Uh, and th these are the common challenges which the industry is facing right now. So if you move to the next slide. So we now start moving towards the solution part of it uh, and uh, why we are going to talk about SAP RAR. So uh, the high level solution for production and broadcasting company. So we saw some examples in the previous slides uh, and you would have realized that the change in this uh, change in the revenue recognition model, the IFRS 15 or AC 606. These are not just uh, accounting changes. They actually impact everything. They impact how you get into your contracts, how you recognize the sales, how you incentivize your salespeople. Uh, so there are lots of changes that are going to uh, that are going to happen to your business or have already happened to the business and you need a robust solution that can actually address these scenarios and in today's complex world when we talk about any of these scenarios or rights management we talk about uh, fulfillment happening on multiple parameters the most common the typical three are event based or time based or percentage completion so we saw some example of uh, these in the previous slides when we talked about uh, event based for example on a subscription delivery or we saw percentage completion in case of production studios. You can have time based for subscription uh, and you can even have uh, time based for uh, uh, in case of OTT platform right sales. 
So there are various complex methods, the three, these three being the, uh, the most prominent ones, but there are other methods also which can be available. And SAP RAR uh, is, can be configured to address all of these scenarios. Uh, your SAP RAR can be uh, uh, integrated with third party sales and billing system also, uh, so that you can bring in that data into the system and then use it for revenue recognition. So um, if we move to the next slide, we'll specifically talk about why RAR is uh, unique. Um, uh, okay, sorry, uh, just one a quick one before that. So uh, this this is probably a good segue where we can try, uh, we can start moving into the right sales part of it. So right sales process has become uh, more and more complicated today. Uh, I think we all we all know that uh, that with the OTT platforms, there is a long tail of revenue. So earlier, in the in the, the world was simple when you could air something on on the television channel once or twice and maybe you will have some repeat telecast after that and your revenue would be recognized over a relatively small period or you would have a box office release and most of your revenues would be recognized in the first few weeks of the release and there would be some tail of course uh, of, with the dvd sales and so on and so forth but with the ott platform now you have a very long tail of revenues which can uh, spread over multiple years so the right sales has become very complicated you also have more platforms available than before. So uh, you have multiple ways of selling from uh, uh, airline um, uh, on entertainment uh, to various OTT platforms uh, to uh, DVDs to rent or buy on uh, OTT platforms or as part of your package on OTT platform. So there are multiple platforms and ways now this uh, deals can be done. So that makes the entire process a lot more complicated. And then on top of that, we have these changes in the uh, the gap that we talked about, which were uh, uh, brought in uh, in combination by FASB and ISB, uh, and that have made the revenue recognition process even more complicated. So if we move to the next slide, uh, and that's why SAP RAR is the answer. Uh, and this is quite a unique offering from SAP. When we when we think about SAP's media solutions, we don't normally think about uh, something like RAR, revenue recognition, but that's where SAP's strength is. Uh, if you compare the other platforms that are available, other solutions that are available for ERP and financials, uh, I think nobody offers a solution like this uh, in the market, uh, such a robust and strong solution. Uh, the RAR 1.3, which is the new version now, is available as embedded within S4 HANA. So that's a that's a great advantage for uh, for you uh, if you are planning to move to S4 HANA. If you are not, then that's a, that's one driver that you can use. Uh, it will it will help you. Uh, implemented it uh, much faster, much smoothly. Uh, typical implementation could be within six months. Uh, you can integrate with your sales or billing systems. Uh, you may need some changes in SAP SD, so that's a caveat uh, how your SD is currently configured. If you're doing a green field with S4, great. You can uh, have the RAR as part of your plan right from the start and define the processes uh, that way, which is exactly what BBC Studios did, and that, that they saw some great advantages of doing that way. Uh, but uh, if not, you have a legacy and you need to work around it, then you may need some changes in SAP SD, uh, that, the way you're currently doing it. Uh, irrespective of that, I think this uh, solution offers something which is unique, uh, which is not available within any other uh, 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 ERP or financial solution within, within the market. And it immediately leads to several benefits. So for example, uh, you can have, you can reduce the risk of understating or overstating your revenues uh, with uh, having uh, defined your proper uh, uh, sales contracts and the performance obligation process and the rules for recognizing the revenues based on that. Uh, this process right now is typically managed in a very manual and laborious way uh, and that can be error prone. Uh, it can also be very time consuming. So by uh, automating, uh, RER can bring in all the automation required for uh, doing the revenue recognition and the postings. So the automation can bring in huge benefits in terms of saving in cost and time uh, during your typical month end process or period end process. And of course, needless to say, the compliance will increase in your reporting significantly as well. So uh, all in all, I think this is a great uh, package that can that can be adopted by media industry. It typically is not viewed by many, many people as a media industry specific knowledge. People can see this as a generic finance solution and it's true to some extent. Yes, RAR can be used in all industries. But its uh, usage within media industry is absolutely, uh, I mean, it's almost uh, perfectly made for a media industry, which is something that people do not easily think about. And I think BBC Studios example where we'll, we'll, Helene will now talk about how they fit, how they managed to fit it in for the right sales process is a perfect example of, of that. Um, so before I hand over to Helene, uh, Richard, any quick comment or any any 
No, I mean, I think you covered it. I mean, RAR is something we built for, you know, 25 of our industries at SAP. I think you've done an incredible job with uh, Helene and team at the BBC in bringing it to a use case that's media specific. Um, I think one of the things that, you know, is unique is the embeddedness of RER into S4 HANA as we move forward. But as you said, you can still use it if you're on an ECC platform. I think you did a good job, my friend. <laughs> Helene, it's all yours. Helene, all yours. Yeah. Great. So I'm just going to start with a little brief um, introduction of who we are in BBC Studios. Do you want to go to the next? Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, what do we do at BBC Studios and what kind of business we are? So we are mainly a production and distribution business. We are based in the UK, so our headquarters in the UK, but we have offices um, around the world in Australia, um, in the US, in France, Germany, different other countries, which means we have uh, local gap um, requirements also to meet. And um, our main line of business, like I said, are content and our distribution business. The channels, uh, which is um, what um, you mentioned earlier, Katia, on the uh, subscription or advertisement um, uh, line of business and our production. So there's other line of business that we are uh, going into, but uh, they are smaller than and, and based on ancillary uh, lines. Those three are um, our main focus. We are part of a complicated landscape because we have different lines of business, different systems. We integrate with uh, upstream and downstream systems and uh, we use uh, SAP. We went into uh, a brand new system. So um, before before we implemented RAW, we had a 20 year old um, ECC system with a lot of customization. Um, that means that we had bespoke solution for our branded services, which is our channel business. Uh, there was a, a lot of um, manual adjustment needed because there was um, uh, we were not we were not IFRS 15 compliant at all. There was no smoothing over the contract life of the revenue, so it was very basic and very um, very manual. The on the content side uh, content side sorry we had an automated solution, but it had its own limit because we had to build up front to be able to recognize the revenue. So that means if we had a contract with five installments where the last one was due two years down the line, we had to bill all of those five invoices on day one. So that has its challenges and um, some some problems. Do you want to move to the next one? Thank you. So what we did, um, we went through a big finance transformation project uh, about two years ago. Uh, like I said, our system was pretty old and uh, trying to fix it was a bit more complex. We just decided to jump and, and do the uh, full S4 HANA implementation. And with that, the RAR implementation. So we had major goals for this because you don't go through a, a big implementation like this just for the fun of it. We wanted to be um, RFI 15 compliant. We wanted to be, um, we have compliance on our local gaps and also be uh, clean with the on the audit side. We wanted to have less manual process, so as much automation as possible. Um, we also, um, by, by doing the automation, we wanted to try to avoid any duplication of entries so that we would have a, a smooth process from our, or, or driven by the auto, um, order to cash. And we had a brief of going as um, out of the box as possible. No customization. We kind of learned from our, our 20, 20 odd year old system with an old of um, customization. We learned from that. We wanted to go as, as clean as possible, um, which we did, and um, improve our billing process and our reporting uh, facility. So those were some of the, the main goals we had. Did we get through those? I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> yeah, if you could move on. Thank you. So how did we get there? Because that's great to have those goals, but uh, we need to make sure we, we achieve this. Um, so we had um, two mass massive areas of focus uh, for our content. I'll start with content first, um, and we call that the event-based revenue recognition, where we recognize the, re um, the revenue based on our performance obligation. And um, if I, um, if you remember, I, I mentioned that we had uh, everything built up front. So what we did is we separated the billing process to the revenue recognition by 
um, making the performance obligation on the sales order rather than on, on the billing document. So that that was that was a good good thing to do. For us, we were able to um, bill our customer when they were supposed to be billed, not just for uh, our, our internal um, finance requirements. Um, and we were also, uh, or we are also able to um, do any changes to our performance obligation on the sales order only. So, if, for example, during the uh, you, you've built you've built your contract, you've built your sales uh, your invoices. And the license style that changes, for example, you can or we can change it on the sales order without impacting the billing document, and it will automatically update the uh, the posting in RAR. So that's great. Means no more manual adjustment. Everything flows from the system, and um, yeah, there's less there's less um, confusion for the customer, for the AR team, for the finance team. How we got this done, not on our own. <laughs> so we did a lot of analysis um, to understand what type of contract, what type of deal we were we were um, handling within within a company. So those are um, on this slide. You can see a summary of of our, of our analysis on the main main um, contract. Uh, so set fee, output deal, revenue share. How we billing them? What's the um, pro, uh, performance obligation for all of those? So that we had a clear idea of how our business is structured and what needed to be done. And when I say we, we had a team uh, of people working on this. Do you want to move to the next slide? Um, because it's um, it looks easy on paper, but when you're trying to, especially when you're set into a mentality of 22 years old on one system and one customization, you, you do what you want with manual journals, um, it takes a bit of uh, effort to to train your mind into the uh, raw process. Um, so um, uh, Shaquille from Invenio helped us going through that to understand what needed to be done and what that meant as a business. Um, on the uh, time-based um, uh, contract, which is uh, our channel business mainly, um, we had uh, some challenges there also. So we we, we had to to do um, a, a cleanup of our contract. So we wanted to have our SD contract to reflect our legal uh, contract with the customer. Um, and those contracts are then from SD flying, flowing sorry, into RR to, to create another contract there to get the postings done. So we had um, for our time-based revenue recognition um, contracts, we looked at our billing plan to drive the, uh, the, the, the postings. So the billing plan and the, the length of that contract. So contracts are there, contract are in there. Those are key values that we needed to, to capture on our contract in SD. And uh, we also had to uh, be a bit more disciplined in what we can change in our contract, what we can't, or, or how to process those changes. Um, and um, this is why we had to... Um, to, to have a bit of a different structure in our sense that we, we've got um, Rob, who's on the, on the uh, conference also, um, who's now the product owner for RAR and who is doing a bit of a link between the business and the technical um, team. Um, and when I say the business, I mean the finance uh, or the accountant uh, team, um, so that we, we've, we're covering both aspects. Um, the benefits for us on this uh, line of business is again the RFRS compliance, uh, the lack, the, the the minimum adjustment, manual adjustment that we uh, we got rid of, and also we met our reporting requirements. Obviously, because the finance guys will need to have clear understanding of what's being posted and report on this. Okay. okay. So what did we learn through this? Uh, quite a lot, actually. Um, I would say um, the main main area to focus on is your people. Like uh, I mentioned, that you can't do this on your own. And you, even as a project team, I think you need to have uh, um, a mixture of uh, SMEs, a mixture of strong consultants that understand the order to cash, but also the finance um, life, <laughs> the finance um, and and the uh, RFIs or or gap requirements, whatever is applicable in your countries. Um, but that's that's key because those two uh, processes, for for me anyway, work hand in hand. 
Um, and you, if, you, if you don't have the understanding on the finance side of how that data is driven, then you're, you're missing out because you're trying to adjust in the, in, in the wrong way. So um, a, lot of, a lot of engagement from the business is required. Uh, a lot of education of that business also because um, uh, things change. You can't just have your old behavior or your, your current behavior being um, uh, replicated into, uh, into your, your, new, your new system and your new design. Uh, there are requirements and, and, and for us to work properly, you need to follow the right steps and the right rules, um, especially around changes and around how do you set up your contract. It works beautifully, beautifully, sorry, that's not an English word, but anyway, it's, it's beautiful when, <laughs> when you set up your contract um, initially in SD correctly and it flies and it flows through, you have no issue whatsoever. Um, so that sounds easy, but there's a lot of training involved and, and a lot of uh, change of people's mentality or, or maybe not mentality, but at least view of how things need to work. Um, next big area for us was data because we, we didn't start, we start from scratch in the system, but we had data to load into that system. So um, for our content, we couldn't really do migration because uh, um, we had everything uh, built up front. So there was nothing uh, here we could drive. Uh, so I don't know if something has changed, but, but the migration was not possible for this. So we had a bespoke solution. Um, for new contract, we have got an integration with um, uh, our rights management system that provides us the uh, performance obligation. Uh, information. So any changes to this flow through from the rights management into SAP and then into our, into our. We did some cleansing of our data. Um, sorry for yeah, thank you. Um, for especially for channels and the um, the time based contracts uh, because you need to be very clear on what needs to be recognized as a starting position. It's okay when you start new because you can apply the new principle, but when you're migrating uh, an existing position, you need to be very clear. You need to modify your data to fit your new config configuration. You need maybe to change the way your contracts are set up because they are no longer applicable. What's fixed is not really fixed. What's variable is not fixed whatever works for you, but it needs to be um, looked after and taken care. So the in-flight contracts were uh, required quite a lot of a lot of work. Um, and also uh, to have the data cleanse, you need the people above. So, so that's why you need um, that team of people from the different uh, area of your business that are on the ground, that understand the data and that can quickly verify if it's if it's correct or what's the starting position and all of that. Um, uh, yep, yeah, and then yeah, obviously your reporting requirement, all of this needs to be uh, tested. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the last thing is uh, is obviously your system. How did it need to be configured? What's your design of the system? How do you get your data? Where does it come from? What data needs to be, uh, or what type of contract need to be um, um, RL specific? Some will not, some will, so you need to configure all of that. Uh, your, what helped us really uh, was to do a, a, some pr a proof of concept um, because that was a bit of a big jump for us to go from a, a customization into something out of the box that we didn't really have any um, knowledge of uh, internally. So that's why you know we had several uh, visits uh, with SAP within Vinyl so that we could talk about our fears and talk about what needed to be done to understand how the product would work so that we could gain some confidence on this. Um, and like I said, we, we tested, over tested, and we still need to test if there's something that changed. So um, you, you need to be involved. You need to, to um, get as many people as possible on the journey with you because um, it's easier once you go live. You're not, you're not a small little team trying to get an army of a, of accountants trying to understand the system. And, um, and yes, and, and for us, the performance obligation being automated was uh, the, the, the key, right? Was um, we, we could have uh, clear billing, clear revenue recognition, 
and not um, not a mix match of, of of those two processes so it starts from sd and it flies into um, rl that's it for me thank you thanks aline uh, this was great a lot of questions okay let me start with uh, the first one there are two attendees who basically ask that uh, are we going to send the, uh, the the slide deck and also the recording uh, the answer is yes we are going to do that uh, right after the webinar uh, today itself uh, there is a question and i leave it up to you kedar uh, and richard and, and Haleed to uh, to answer uh, it says is there a possibility in sd to manage the events um, example release dates delivery of materials etc Do you want to take that? Yeah, yeah I mean, so, oh, go on, go on, Helen. yeah, Helen, please go ahead. Yeah. From from my own experience in at BBC, what we are is we we getting that information from our rights management system. We are updating our sales order, so it's it's possible for us. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you, the the answer is yes. Uh, uh, you, you can do it in SD. Uh, how you trigger it is. Um, like uh, Helene mentioned, it could be from your rights management system, or you can do it directly. Um, a lot of time when you are talking in the context of rights sales, it probably will be from your rights management tool, whichever it is, that will trigger it. Uh, but uh, yes, you can use SD uh, for that. Okay. Uh, Helene, this is for you specifically. Which version of RAR did you implement? Uh, we got the 1.3 version, I think. Mm. Okay. Uh, did you have the inventory stock for deliveries also when you did the implementation? We uh, so we we don't we don't have a um, integration with our fulfillment um, um, system, uh -huh. uh, but we are capturing so license start date definitely comes from the rights management system, and the uh, delivery date uh, comes from uh, that team also. So we we are asking them to provide us that information. The way they're doing it is probably manual, but uh, we are getting that information so that we can trigger, and it's the latter of those two dates. So we, we need it. So yeah, Got if it. it was integrated, even better. But we're not. But we, we're getting it another way. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, does revenue recognition take care of the exchange rate differences between the billing and the actual revenue recognized? So. Yeah, uh, we have. We we build in different currencies. We have a different company called currency. We operate in one group currency. So, so yeah, it does. Yeah, it's, right. it's quite strong. Quite strong in that area. Uh, in fact, that's one uh, strong feature you can say uh, that you can get with SAP uh, with uh, with Aria. Sure. There are a few uh, very open-ended questions. Uh, I'll take the specific ones first. Uh, this one says, uh, how do you manage the deals where the content has not been finalized as yet? So for us, uh, we only bill once we have a signed contract. Um, so that kind of takes away some of that uh, unknown. We also have a different configuration that looks after uh, so, for example, we would bill for uh, a minimum guarantee where there's no uh, actual um, title selected yet. There's a, a, an amount that has been committed by the customer, and then they do the content selection later. So, when they're doing the content selection, um, that again comes from on a, a sales order, gets updated, and goes into RL. Okay. So, we write on the content. Uh, any other data related preparations like data cleaning or harmonization that uh, you need to be prepared with? Yeah, <laughs> I would say that's the that's uh, that's the heavy workload and it's the crucial part. I, I would say if there's one thing you need to look at is, is watch out for your for your data. Your RAR can be configured beautifully if you're loading uh, messy data, you will get messy entries. So that's the uh, something that is 
probably boring to do. Yes, very boring, but it's crucial if you want things to to get done properly and to post properly. Okay. Uh, Kedar, this is probably to you. What would be the approximate timeline for a normal RAR implementation? A uh, little bit uh, subjective and open-ended, but yeah. <laughs> yeah kind of expected that so we try to give a general timeline which is about uh, you know say six months is what we we recommend um, and if we are doing it right from the start with a greenfield with s4 that's achievable uh, and like uh, i was mentioning in the previous slide one of the slides if there is a legacy that you have especially on the sd side if you have configured your sd or customized your sd in certain ways uh, then you may have to untangle that or uh, make some changes uh, which could which would depend on uh, you know the amount of customization you, you might have done so uh, the it can be you know from four to six months also even as low as four months if you have doing it as a, uh, from scratch with a, a fresh implementation uh, but it can it can be a little longer so there's no one answer to it but i would say on an average uh, six months is a is a good time frame that you can implement uh, an rar sure okay so four to six months okay uh, this is from a very good friend of ours in the industry. Um, he asks, uh, did you encounter any issues with the allocation by title? For us, well, not really, because we get that information from the rights. I mean, everything comes from the rights management system. So we, okay. uh, again, have a, a new one in place. <laughs> so everything is new. Uh, but but it's it's great because we were able to fix the issues we had with the old stuff and 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 reconvert that data so yeah if, if your data comes in then you can do what you need to do sure uh close to the final one uh this says any fury apps used related to mr Kedar, would you be able to? Uh, sorry, uh, related to? Uh, MR. Okay, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, okay, that's uh, what it says. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, any Fiori apps related to RNR? There's a correction there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have the uh, Fiori apps uh, available uh, for RAR as well. Um, so you, you can start. This, that's that's one of the things, uh, especially when the new when you talk about the new embedded version, uh, you have the uh, Fiori apps available, uh, which can help the users um, uh, get into the or adopt the solution much quickly. Sure. Again, as I said, uh, there are quite a few ones, uh, but they are, they are all pretty open-ended. So uh, we can basically uh, close uh, the webinar, but uh, any last uh, few lines from uh, from Kedar, Richard, uh, and Helene before we close? No, I mean, I just, uh, I just sat here and listened today. I think, you know, I read somewhere the other day that everybody should try to go to bed smarter than when they woke up. I, I think I've achieved that and it's only 10, 15 here. So I thought that was really good. And Helene and team, congratulations on a, a very uh, significant S4 uh, implementation story there with RAR. Congratulations to Kedo Vichel and the team for bringing these guys home. Um, Kedo, it's, it's your party. I'll, uh, I'll leave you have the last word to hear. No, I think thanks, thanks Richard for the kind words. Uh, and I, I echo your feeling uh, this, uh, uh, what BBC Studios have achieved is is quite tremendous. It's, it's quite amazing, okay. and it's uh, there's there's a reason why we wanted to share this story because that's something that others can follow uh, in the industry. So yes, we are a SAP product expert, and we can we can do certain things from solution side, uh, but uh, there's a lot of work that needs to happen from from uh, the customer side as well, uh, from data side, from the change management, um, having a clear idea of what you want to achieve at the end of it. And I think this was one clear example where um, the solution was successful mainly because of what the customer also managed to do, not just because what what uh, SAP RAR brings to the table or, or what we can bring to the table as a consulting company, but what uh, BBC pulled together uh, with the team. And I know Helen has a team. We have one of our colleagues also on the call today uh, from finance side. So they, they all pulled in uh, 
uh, punched much above their weight and managed to get this uh, up and running in in uh, one go which is not an easy feat so thanks thanks elin for uh, uh, this great sharing this great story <laughs> thank you absolutely so uh, there will be a small survey at the end of it uh, we'll be still asking you questions about how did you feel uh, on this webinar today and what would you like to hear from us uh, the next time uh, similarly we will you know pick the best topic and uh, keep you posted so thanks a lot everyone thank you and uh, have a good day uh, evening and uh, please wear your masks uh, when you're in the public <laughs> and, uh, be safe be safe <laughs> <laughs> namaste <laughs> thanks. 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 Thanks.